Yes, yes, yes. What is up? What is up? Mixed Combat Radio family. It's another weekly edition of the show. We're back. I'm joined by the lovely Melody Joy from the Beauty of Boxing and the lovely Gary from 3D Boxing Blog and Texas Boxing Scene. It's a good one today. Canelo Alvarez review show. He didn't look like shit this time, too. So I can really go full fanboy out. Uh, I'm excited for that one. You know, is he the king of boxing again, guys? Is he better than Inoue? Right there. Is he better than that guy? Nobody is arguing about that. I mean, maybe some people are. Right now, Twitter is arguing. Our ex is arguing. Just not say that. X is arguing over Gervonta Davis versus Canelo as a face of boxing. So let's get into that. Ooh, That's exciting. I like that one. That's I a good know. argument. I know Gary probably has not takes about that. Um, saying that, you know, Gervonta Davis isn't a, a megastar. Um, anyways, a lot to get to today. So there are some fights this weekend, too. We'll, we'll touch on those. It's not a ton of big fights, but there's like four or five fight cards actually this weekend. So dive into that one as well after we get into Canelo uh, and Jamel Charlo. Undisputed versus Undisputed. It's like bunch of the show, all that fun stuff. Melody, you were wrong about one thing, though. I was des- terribly, desperately, terribly wrong about that. That That's too. it. We were both horribly <laughs> wrong about Ugas. And Gary, oh my God, I forgot about that. Gary's going to Gary's eat, gonna us eat us up about Mario Barrios. What was I wrong about? Give a few vibes. Oh, I have no idea what those numbers... I don't even... I just threw... You guys put me on the spot last time and was like throwing numbers. I don't even know what those numbers mean or like... I get kind of what they are, but like... Guys, I don't. I have no idea. Don't listen to me ever about pay per view numbers. How was like, your weekend though? Did you enjoy the fight? Oh my god, love. I mean, the card was kind of shitty. Um, Ramos, the Ramos is got robbed. Um, Ugas lost, and um, Charlo went down in fashion. So it was a good, good, good weekend. I'm psyched. I was psyched about it. Um, wasn't too great of a pay per view, but I, we'll get into was, it. Yeah, we'll, we'll get into it. Gary? Gary in Dallas. How was your weekend? Uh, it, it, it was good. The Texas Longhorns won again. 5-0 and for the first time since 2009 when they went to the National Championship game. Uh, so so it, it was good. It was a good week. Uh, this week we got Oklahoma, Red River Shootout. Who you got, Matt? Number three, Oklahoma, or number 19? Uh, number three, Texas, or number 19, Oklahoma? Who you got? I mean, I hate both those states, so it's one of those. I was born in Texas. Don't hate on Texas. I'll hate you, on. you you can't. You I can hate on Oklahoma all you want. I'll join you. Are they called Okies out there? Or I mean, th- that's I like colloquially, yeah. That's a nickname. Yeah. Okay. It's not a slur. <laughs> it's not <a> slur. <laughs> Okies. And even if you are, they're Okies. Who cares? <laughs> Do you know the toothbrush was invented in Oklahoma? That's why it's called the toothbrush and not the teeth brush. That was a good one, Gary. That was a good one. That was a good one. A good one. I, I like the it. The inner south hate is, is <laughs> fascinating to me. They're not the south. Anything above the Red River is a Yankee. Oh, goodness. It is gracious. Digressing, Gary. Canelo. Jamel Charlo. I mean, obviously he dominated Charlo. Yeah. Meow. We're not lions only anymore. No. Meow. 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 That lion stand quickly. I'm going. I'm going to defend Charlo here. I feel yeah, like don't right. Matt. Don't don't defend Charlo. It's, it's indefensible what he what did. He had a chance him? for greatness. Him and his brother have been calling Canelo out like ten years since they're yes. you know on Golden Boy cards fighting at six o'clock in the afternoon. They've been calling out Canelo, and this is what you do when you get the chance. Don't defend here's, him, Matt. Don't. Here's the reality. No, no, no. I'm not defending in a sense like his performance because it was a shitty performance. But I think we're like putting that way too much on the Charlo not showing up side instead of it being like he was just levels below Canelo. You know, I, I remember I was talking, Gary, about like when Big Charlo even had that run of really bad performances. And we were saying like, dude, Charlo, I mean, Canelo would eat up this version of Jamal Charlo bad. And I mean, he fought a version of Charlo that was two weight classes below him, that looked like it too. I mean, there was a noticeable size difference. Char- I didn't see it like that. Like I really didn't. Like I didn't. It, like it didn't look like Kell Brook versus. It didn't look like uh, Rigandow versus Loma. It didn't look like um, 
Mikey versus Spence. It didn't look like Cal Burke versus Triple G. It didn't look like a mismatch in the ring to me. The size didn't – I'm going to say Charlo didn't look great. It didn't look like – you know, it looked like – I'm just not going to cut weight. Like, he didn't look like he bulked up or anything. He didn't look great on the scale. He didn't look great in the ring. But that's all on Charlo. Like, there's a meme, right? And it's him after the Harrison loss. And he's like – like this. And it says, Charlo after a loss for 750000 right? And it's like the Canelo loss. He's got a big smile on his face. Loss after Canelo for $15 million. Like, he took the payday, man. Like, I'm not blaming him for taking the payday. Fine. Whatever. But that's the effort that you give? I think that's the only effort, if that makes sense. Because I, I don't think any version of that Charlo does any better. He's not going to put on 14 pounds of muscle in two months. And know how to use it. That's just not, that's, that's not humanly possible unless he's using sure. steroids. Like, it's, it's just not happening. 14 pounds of muscle, if you lift every single day, that might take two years for a grown man. Yeah. I mean, so the idea of him, like, being able to put on 14 pounds of mass to face Canelo, a guy that's been fighting at 168 and 175 as of lately, I think is very – People think, forget what Mikey Garcia looked like. Has he gained weight? And I, and I think I think this too. There was a height difference in those two examples you brought up: Rigo and Loma, and Mikey and Spence. There was a noticeable height difference between the ta- the bigger weighted guy and the smaller weighted fighter. There was no height difference. There's ap- actually in the opposite way. But yeah, Charles. The difference with Canelo and Co. Of course, of course. Was but, that a but, height difference? That but was Canelo, noticeable? Yes, it was. It didn't work in their favor either. But Canelo, I would say he looked bigger in mass. Like he yes, looked like he a looked tank red. in there. While Charlo looked like like you said, Gary, didn't even cut weight. He had no muscle definition. And I think honestly speaking, whether it's big Charlo or small Charlo, they're levels below a guy like Canelo. Unfortunately, yes. Like Brian Castano, good win. Tony Harrison, good win. But those are the career best wins of Jamel Charlo. And, I mean, we've seen Brian Cassano in the gym. No offense to Cassano. Love you, guy. You're an amazing, friendly guy. But He's not Canelo. I I get it. Yeah, he's not. I mean, drastically different opponent. So, I see what you're saying. It's a Pontiac compared to a Cadillac. I get it. You know, like, I get it. I I get it. And Cassano gave him hell twice. I thought beat him once, right? I, I, I get it. That being said... The blueprint is not to back up. The blueprint is you got to – look, Charles is a master boxer puncher. It's what he is. And he tried to fight like Billy Joe Saunders. It's like even when he had some success, when he landed a couple of right hands, he never followed up. He never went for it. Like, look, if he would have put his balls on the table, stepped up, stand in the pocket, and, 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 tried, and, and tried to fight him in arms reach, right, he probably would have gotten knocked out but at least he would have given himself a chance to win the fight. When you do what you did, I'm not. he probably would have gotten knocked out, right? But when Peter McNeely fought Mike Tyson, did Peter McNeely run from him or did Peter McNeely go right into the fire? Like, I mean, what are you going to do? You can't run from Canelo. And look, I'm not comparing Jamel Tarlo to, to Peter McNeely. Jamel Tarlo, Jamel Tarlo was on most people's pound for pound list and probably like five, six, seven, right? Like, so this is not a B level guy. It's not a C level guy. This is a guy who won all the belts in a very competitive weight class. This is a top notch fighter. Is he as good as Canelo? Clearly not. But you got to give yourself the best chance to win. You're never going to get the opportunity like this again. I understand he got $15 million. I get it. I get it. But like, you're gonna get 15 million regardless. Why not give yourself again? There's a famous scene at, at, from a Bruce Lee movie, right? Where Bruce Lee, it, 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 you know, is trapped, right? They got him trapped. Two sliding doors come down, one on both sides, bang, bang, right? He can't get out. He doesn't kick, he doesn't scream, he sits down. It's like, whatever you're gonna do to me, you're gonna do to me, right? I'm not gonna waste energy, I'm not gonna panic, I'm gonna sit here and and, and I'm, this is the best move right now. The best move for Charlo, and it's not a good move, but it's his only move, is to stand there and 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 try to fight like Bavolden. Try to fight him in the middle of the ring and lay in the fight. Try to try to get him to go backwards. If you can get him to go backwards, you've made him uncomfortable. If you let him come forward, he's eventually going to steamroll you. Caleb Smith found that out. Caleb Plant found that out. Billy Joe Saunders found that out. They, they all, like, you can't run from him for 12 rounds. If he would have stood in, would he probably got knocked out? Yeah, probably. But that's your only chance to win. I, 
I don't know if you want to jump in, Melody. But no, I disagree I, with what have, Gary's I, saying. I don't. I have one. I just have one more comment. I, w I just was going to say, like, um, don't you didn't you see improvement in Canelo cutting off the ring in this fight? Versus yeah, I did. Good point. That's a really good point. Right? No. Yeah, it was a, it was an improvement, right? So it was, it's like really he's, good. He looked like Triple G for Chelton. He was cutting the right. Like he was just yeah. chasing his ass and not running. And Charlo looked like Floyd Mayweather, like on a bike, you know. But like, not being a Floyd Mayweather. But not, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Not having the power, not having the the uh, the, the the able to connect well. I I, I think Charlo power wise was never going to hurt Canelo. So I yeah. think the idea of him standing in the pocket and trying to land something big or a big combination is just not going to work. I think his best chance was to be on the back foot and to counter counter box, but he didn't do that. That was his biggest issue. Like him on the back foot. How many times were we looking at the fight and being like, Charlo, like what are you doing? throw a throw jab, like throw something. something. Back, back foot fighters can't do can, Caleb plant and Billy Joe couldn't fight him like that. Right. And those, and that's their natural style. Jamel Charlo is a natural boxer puncher. His instinct is to stand and try to come forward, right? But Gary, if, a box if the of boxer punches, punches can do it, you can't difference. do it. It's a 14-pound difference. When you talk about Bivol, he's a guy that's cutting weight to get to 175. Fucking Jamal Charlo was eating donuts and McDonald's to trying to, to get, get to, to 168. <laughs> yeah. Like, it, it's just a totally different ball game when Which you're talking about that type of mass you can put behind a punch. Canelo's not used to facing guys at 175. He fought Kovalev, who was older. And who he struggled with. Like, there was rounds where I thought Canelo was losing. Well, and he did lose rounds. He did. Like, mm -hmm. um, I think the judges were really off when they had Canelo up on all the scorecards at the end of the fight. I thought that was wrong. I thought Canelo was potentially behind in that fight and got the knockout. Bivol. Yeah, against Cove. Against Cove, yes. Yeah, I agree with that. He was, I thought he was behind, too. Yeah. And against Bivol, I mean, again, we're talking about a guy that's in his prime, a really good boxer puncher, like you said. But he also has really good boxing IQ. He can box on the back foot, which Charlo can too. I don't think Charlo's just a boxer puncher. I think you do him a disservice in that. He's just a guy that is 14 pounds lighter. I mean, honestly, Gary, this I should have been more critical of this fight beforehand. Because this goes back to my theory that every time we have these types of fights, they don't work. Like, uh, 99 out of 100 times, we have a guy moving up two weight classes for a fight. Yeah, it's not. It's just not, not going to work. Favor. Against a pound unless for pound. Unless they're all-time great. Hopkins did it. Roy Jones did it. I mean, unless they're all. And they're, Floyd, like, beyond great. But they yeah. were doing. They were beyond great doing it against subpar competition, I would say. Not Th great against great. These are guys that I are trying to be great doing it against a guy that is great in his, is in his prime. Like, well, Canelo's 32, history. 33 years old. I think everyone is forgetting how good Canelo Alvarez is. Okay? After Inoue. And after Canelo just not looking as motivated in the last couple of fights, people were like, ah, Canelo's aging. I said it. But well, it's still Bivol, Bivol, Bivol kind of, you know, shattered our dreams a little bit. But the reality is it's still Canelo fucking Alvarez. Right. I mean, he's still number one, number two best in the world, arguably the face of boxing. Like, that's just undisputable. Jamel Charlo was never close to that legacy, unfortunately. Yeah. And the reality is nobody is. There's only one guy that is potentially a technical threat to Canelo Alvarez. And I've been saying since day one, I will keep saying it, it's Big Daddy David Benavidez, okay? That guy's looking 200 pounds Woo! chubby right now. Solid. Training, training for Andrade, camp, baby. Okay? Yeah. <laughs> but that guy is a threat to Canelo Alvarez. Why? Because he, he's 200 pounds right now. You know what I mean? Like it's a different ball game when talking about that size. The power he has, and then his two hundred pounds. Because right? again, people think people forget Canelo. I know you don't forget Gary, but people forget that Canelo's a guy that started at one forty seven technically. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like he went to one fifty four pretty fast in his career. Was there for a long time. One sixty, one sixty eight, one seventy five. Like he's gone up significantly in weight, and he's five eight. Like he's smaller than me in terms of height. Mm -hmm. That's my point about Canelo. He's bulked up to 168. His best weight class is 154, right? He's a 154 pounder who ate too much tainted meat, okay? Jamal Tall is a 154 pounder who looks like a 160 pounder. I don't think there's that much different in size. And the other thing I would say about Charlo, when Floyd fought, um, when Floyd Mayweather fought Oscar and when he fought Canelo, he came in 150, 151. So he found a weight that works for him instead of just trying to come in at the limit, right? 
that should have been what Charlo like. If Charlo would have came in at one sixty three, that probably would have been a better fit for him. I think I think you really underestimate how bulky Canelo is. <coughs> like I knew guys growing up, and I bet you knew this in, in, in playing sports growing up, right? That were like five eight, yeah. but they're they're they're, they're a buck eighty, a buck ninety five muscle, right? And they don't look that big either. They don't look like they're like Arnold Schwarzenegger, but they're actually a 185 pounds on the scale. You know what I mean? Like some people just carry weight differently. Canelo Alvarez has to cut weight to get to 168. Mm-hmm. He's not he's not just eating and not cutting weight and going up to the scale at 168. He has to cut weight to get there. He's in that sweat suit. I mean, <laughs> and we Week see up. it. Week we, up. Like he's like Canelo is walking around close to and i wouldn't be surprised 190 200 pounds i would not be surprised he is probably. that old. 190 i would say probably is fair yeah so i don't think jamel charlo is doing that there's no way he's coming down from 190 all the way to 154 it's not unless he's a uh, key thurman after your layoff <laughs> like, it's just not possible so like i yes in terms of like height and everything they didn't look that different in size but if you go back and watch the fight gary Canelo is significantly bigger. His legs, his his back, you know, every muscle in him is big. And it's just it's just different. And again, the levels are different. But I want to get a little bit to the face of boxing argument. Mm-hmm. If that's okay. Because I mean we can it wasn't like it was that close of a fight. Jamel Charlo didn't put up that much. I thought he lost pretty much every round. Um yeah. you've, you've said <laughs> People are talking about Tank and Canelo, which one's the face of boxing. Yes. Numbers came out from Dan Rayfield that the pay-per-view did around 650,000 to 700,000 buys. Me and Gary are right. I was more right than Gary, but it's okay. I guess so, but you went over. So for the price is right, I win, right? I said 600. <laughs> That's international law. I can't deny that. That's true. <laughs> oh, damn it. Oh, Gary wins this one. Anyways, I think this is a fascinating argument. I do feel like Tank is close. Mm-hmm. I'm not going to say outright that he is the face of boxing over Canelo Alvarez right now, but his numbers are almost undeniable right now in terms of that that number with Ryan Garcia, and it's just his past too. Like he's always done really big numbers on Showtime, always done really good at, at the gate. Like he's traditionally been a big draw for boxing, especially for his weight size. I think we're at a point when the next maybe three years or so, if Tank can stay clear of trouble mm-hmm. and keep getting big fights, he's he's going to be the face of boxing. I don't see him losing. Yeah. That's the hard part. I think if he's put up against all the guys we talk about as the best guys at like 135 and 140, mm-hmm. and maybe even a little bit 147, Tank beats a lot of them, if not all of them. You know, like it's kind of small for 147. We're gonna talk about with Barrios in a second, but that win over Barrios is looking better and better in hindsight. Mm -hmm. And it makes me rethink Tank growing into a 147 size body. I know he's gonna look chunky, but (laughs) I've seen him chunky. (laughs) But I think Tank has that lifetime generational power, you know. Like we talk about Deontay Wilder having that power. Like if Deontay Wilder was better athlete and boxer like he would be smoking all these guys he's not that tank is that tank is a superb boxer superb athlete great iq like i i see only maybe one guy give him issues and i still maybe pick tank over him and it pains me to say and that's shakur everyone else i think tank beats whether it's devin haney pro gray loma who else we're gonna talk about i mean (laughs) tio like I think Tank beats them all. Yes, yes. Gary, thoughts? I I agree with that, right? Like the only one I think may be able to beat him is, is, is Shakur because Shakur is such a master. Tio is an interesting one. Tio might knock him out, right? Because Tio is explosive. I would pick Tank, but I could see that if they fought ten times, maybe three times, Tio knocks him out, right? Because Tank is not Canelo. He gets hit trying to come in. Like you could put hands on him. Tio's explosive too. He he can strike quickly. Um, but I would still pick Tank that. The only one that would be really interesting, the ultimate bull versus Matador would be Scott Stevenson. I would pick Tank, but I mean it's it's hard to pick against um Shakur Stevenson. Like he's a master in there. 
Um, the date of um, program and Haney, didn't we? Yeah, we talked about that, me and Gary. Were you on that show? Oh, yeah, you were on. Gary. You were on that show too, didn't we? Oh, yeah. Yeah, we talked about that last time. Hmm. Yeah, the, the pay-per-view. Remember Gary was mad about it being pay-per-view? Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I forgot about that. But Gary, um, face boxing. Tank Canelo. Like, is... I, I would say it's Canelo, right? Like, But that doesn't mean you're the best fighter in the sport. LeBron James is still the face of basketball. He's not a top 20 player anymore, right? Like, That doesn't mean you're the best. You're just the most recognizable. Probably because in the past, you were the best, right? Um you can still uh, cheat the most eat. recognizable who's the face of boxing? It's it's Canelo Alvarez. If you went to a mall and there's a hundred old ladies in, in the mall and you showed them a picture of Canelo and a picture of Tank Davis, who's more of them gonna recognize? Canelo, right? So it's 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 I don't mean that to throw shade at, at Tank Davis, but Canelo's the most recognizable name in boxing. Well, depending on what mall you go to, like what if you went to like <laughs> Bitch. <laughs> like Baltimore. I don't know. <laughs> Outside of being in Baltimore. Yeah. Gold, Gary, but, uh... <laughs> I, I think it's close. I'd be like, who is that redheaded man? <laughs> like, I, I think we're getting to a point where it is like a Mayweather Pacquiao, like 1A, 1B conversation. It's extremely, extremely big. Big, obviously. And um, what was I going to say? Like, it you know like it um the whole culture influences a lot of people a lot of teens a lot of young people um a lot of people um you know with the ethnicities like it it's culturally hip hop is big so the fact that like tank davis has like that whole culture behind him it makes him easy second place yeah i mean the black community in boxing has been one of the second biggest market, market demographic in the sport. Like it's them in Mexico. Like, yep. And if you want to lump all of Latin America together, like, you, like it's Latin America. Well, and, then it's not even close then, but yeah. <laughs> that, I mean, that's, that's the conversation, you know, yeah. at least in the U S right. Cause like in LA, not every Latino fighter is Mexican. There's a lot of Nicaraguans, a lot, a lot of Salvadorians. Yes. Tons of and, ethnicities. And I mean, if you're just a, a gringo walking in, you're, you're not going to know the difference, per se, unless you ask, right? Mm-hmm. So that's why I say, like, in the U.S., you know, Latin American culture and then the black American culture, like, those two are the biggest supporters of boxing. So it's obvious that, of course, we're going to have two representatives of that community be the, the, face. the faces of the sport. Yeah. I think Tank, Tank is, like... I don't know what it is. I think Tank is like within a year of actually surpassing Canelo. I feel it. Like I think we need a couple more fights and for him to stay out of trouble. And I think he's okay. The way he he's gonna get co-signed by certain, like you said, the influencer community. Mm-hmm. Like we just saw. I know Gary may not care about this, but like Offset going on Kai Sense Twitch stream, right? Yes. And that like breaking the internet, right? Like, tell me you don't see Tank being able to go on something like Kai's oh stream my God, yes. and exploding and for a younger audience. He makes with like Broner back in the day and he's so hilarious. I know Tank's funny. Like he's got Tank a is pers- funny. He's got a personality. He's just, you know, it's hard when these guys don't have a, a PR team behind them that's like helping them, versing them along, getting them where they need to be until they're comfortable in front of camera crews and they're comfortable in front of people and talking. Because mm. once they start stuttering, then there's a million people talking shit that they can't speak where they're not smart or they don't know how to read. Well, yeah. you know, that's just the internet stuff. too. So like, I think if if he would have had a little bit more help in that situation, he would be better along. But like, he's a funny guy. Like, he is constantly saying jokes and like with his clapbacks on on Twitter, like he's funny. So I know he would be good at those things once he got comfortable. Mm-hmm. I think he just needs to be exposed to a little bit more. But I mean, I don't know how he's gonna surpass um, an Eminem walkout. You know what I mean? Stop. Like, what? Well, who's he gonna get? Dude, that's re- really offset. <laughs> really, when Ooh. Santa Fe. Cl- well, I mean, Canelo was obviously. I'm talking about like hip hop, like Santa Fe Clan is a hip hop. They're Mexican. Duh. I'm talking about like for for. Corridos are like almost like hip hop. Corridos, no. It's almost. No, it's like no. it's like trap Mexican music. I'm talking about for Gervonta. He ain't gonna come without with some Mexican trap music. Like, what are you talking about? He's coming out with like little baby, who's massive too. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, 
Like, yeah, Tank, well, Tank he's is huge. With, like, that's what I'm saying. He has a big pool because if you see the people he's surrounded with, who he comes out with, who has him in videos and whatnot. He like, still has the highest pay-per-view numbers of the year, right? Does he? Yeah, because he fought with Ryan Garcia. And when Ryan Garcia equals numbers. When Tank does a pay-per-view by himself, it does 150000 When he does what, it with What pay-per-views has Ryan Garcia done? Do, what about? Oh, 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 oh. Okay. I mean, I, mean, okay, I got go. it. Me, go, go. What pay-per-views has Ryan done? Well, Ryan fights on uh, uh, on the zone, so the zone is the end of the pay per view model. So it's not a Gary, fair question. Know, but... <laughs> and, and Gary, remind me. He's only what... done one, obviously, with, with, oh. with Tank, and it did use number. Let, let's remember. Uh, remind me, Gary. Ryan's next fight. Where's that at, and who's his opponent? Uh, it's in San Antonio. And I think he's fighting his grandmother. I think it's his grandmother. Yeah. No, it's Durante. He might lose that fight, actually. Durante is so under the radar good. He may lose that fight. And he's smaller, right? He's a 135 pounder, right? Who's fighting at yeah, Ryan. now? Yes. Uh, Ryan might lose. He'll probably win. But Durante, because he's, he's got a bunch of losses. Like he, he probably lost in Mexico a bunch early in his career. He's got a bunch of losses. But that guy's, it was like when uh, Warrington fought uh, Bronco Laura. I'm like, Warrington might lose. You go watch this guy on YouTube. He's real good. Oscar Durante, this is not a great fight for Ryan. I'm just going to leave it at that. Is it? Do you think it's going to do massive numbers? It'll draw. It, it, it'll it'll sell tickets. Like people will come you, to the venue, but I don't. The zone subscribers, nothing. No, 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 no. I, I went to Ryan when he fought San Antonio when he fought um I Corte whatever his name was. You think a uh, guy that was such a star that he could sell 1.5 million pay per view buys by himself? It sounds like would be able to draw at least his own subscribers. You know, it's just or like a better opponent. You know, any anything really. You know, don't talk down on Duarte. Okay, I know him personally. <sighs> He's my friend since a long time. I've known him in camp with um, uh, Joel Diaz for many many years, and Duarte had to go to Mexico to start fighting because he was losing. Because he US, was losing. okay, he was losing and badly. And not only that, like I know him, know him. Okay, my ex fought him, and it, it was a bit. It was a lot of issues, a lot of issues. Okay, uh, it, he he's not somebody that Ryan should be fighting. There's no need for him and Ryan to be in the ring. And I, and I said this like two weeks ago. Somebody posted. That this is the potential fight, and I was like, "Oh hell no, they better not." Do you remember give the location, though? They said originally, that originally that it was going to be in India. Yeah, when somebody told me, and I was like, "They, they fucking would give this to it." They gave us Bill Zapata. Dude. Now this is what you know. I'm not going to be mad at Dazone because they are giving us Marvin Nation here, here <laughs> in the Valley. Um, I mean, not in the Valley, here in um LA. And uh, where's it? Where's the Thunder Suit? Oh, Long Beach. Yeah, Long Beach. Long Beach. We got uh, one of the promoters out here got a, a contract with DAZN. So our next fights that we'll be at will be on DAZN in November with Armando Vargas. That's I thought that I'm one was in Costa Rica. No. Oh, yeah, yeah. Armando Vargas and, uh, yeah, the, uh, the, the Vargas brothers are yeah. fighting on Thunder yeah, They Shoot. fought in, here in the Valley um, like two months ago. Month ago. Yes. Yeah, they fought in Texas last. So it was, yeah. I think it was, a, no, I don't think it was a Marvin Nation. No. It was Marv Nation with another. It, with it, it another was, one. Yeah. This one too. This one too is going to be a co-promotion, I believe. I haven't talked to Marvin, the promoter, yet, but um, I'm sure he gave us good front row tickets last fight. So this next one that's going to be on the zone. It's a small arena. It's a tiny little um, studio that we're, we'll, they'll be at, but it's cool it's that small. local fights are getting on the zone. Yeah, right. the, Jamel Herring is fighting uh, on a Wednesday night or Tuesday Tuesday night in Who? New York City. Jamel Herring, he's coming back. On, on Broadway Bell. Box? I guess, but it's on the zone. I, I think it's that Broadway series that they used to have. I didn't know they. I thought they stopped that after COVID. I didn't know they still had it. But, yeah, he's fighting at uh, – I forget the name of the – it's this elegant – it's the Broadway boxing thing, yeah. And Jamel Herring is going to air in the zone. So I, I didn't go to it. Is this his comeback? Like comeback yeah. experiment? His last fight was so bad, and he was basically in tears because he knew it was over. And now he's mm -hmm. gonna try to come back. It's like, no, he shouldn't. But oh well. he's such a good dude. Have you ever met him? Like he's such a good guy. Oh, like you, he's such, such a great good dude. dude. Oh, he talks like, about you, you want to like, like guy. You really want to do this? Yeah. No, you know what he it does. is? He it's should. that it's that all fighters like probably like except for like the top like top like they're not making. 
doing this. Yeah, this. and I mean, commentating is not going to pay you. No, especially when I, I know as a, I've been a contractor before, sometimes the promoters try to, like, chip you on the money and, like, not want to, like, pay you. So, like... Yeah. Yeah, it happens. It happens. You know, that's I bet the, Top Rank didn't pay him. That's one. Of, hey, hey, hey. Allegedly, uh, it's a joke. Allegedly, it's a joke. Allegedly. Top Allegedly. Bob, it's Bob, a joke. don't. It's a joke. He maybe he just needs. He has a lot of kids. I'm sure, doesn't he? I don't, I'm I, sure, and he has a beautiful. I don't think house. he has a lot. I mean, four. I think I don't think he has like 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 Antonio Cromartie. That's he's a got lot. Like a, four. <laughs> Gary, I have two, and I'm I'm struggling. Okay. Whoa, <laughs> yeah. I got three. And uh, I want I a fourth. One's a grown adult, okay? They don't count. She doesn't count anymore. <laughs> They're grown adults. <laughs> 23. Girl doesn't count anymore. Okay, I got two kids and I'm struggling. I don't know what I was arguing with Gary about, but I know that he was wrong. I just want to reiterate that. Um, okay. If the listeners. I don't know if I can believe that. Or watchers, you know, obviously tomorrow when this airs, you know, I, I was right. Gary was wrong. I don't know what we're arguing about, but digressing. We're talking about the zone here. Well, yeah. Well, let's talk about Ugas Barrio. Oh, I forgot about the undercard. Yes, yes, yes. yes, yes he yes, was yes, so yes. right, and yes. we were so wrong. What happened, Ugas? Are we getting old looking shot? And I meant shot, Gary. I didn't mean shit in that tweet. Okay. I, he looked both, right? <laughs> he looked both. <laughs> Poor guy. We didn't get paragraphs out of Ugas this time, though. We got an apology. Love him to There's death. There's no reason to apologize. You're 37 years old. You had a good career, former world champion. There's something to apologize for. And you got a gift and beat Manny Pacquiao. I mean, dude, honestly, in what hindsight, a, like, like, what an amazing, like, yeah, an accomplishment. Ooh. And then getting moved up, right? Didn't he get moved up to like the main champ because somebody bounced? Like, dude, he's got a, he's, he, I mean, but he can't go back to Cuba. I guess he's just got to stay here, live it out. He can if he just stops talking shit about Cuba. He can't. He's got a vendetta. It's not that hard. <laughs> it's not that hard. Um, the funny thing is, is that like, in hindsight, like Ugas is going to probably be hyped more than he was, He's like going to be. relative to like his like status, you know, because that Pacquiao win. Yeah. Like, oh yeah. Twenty years from now, like people are going to forget that Pacquiao was older. You know what I mean, Gary? Like, mm -hmm. Ugas seemed like, oh man, he was the dark horse of that era, man. If only he was twenty two. And he started in his pros, which is yeah. kind of true for all the Cuba yeah. fighters. But digressing, yeah, Barrios look good. I mean, honestly speaking, he looked big. This too. was the best he's looked in terms of actual like putting punches together, technical technical skill. But like you said, he looked bigger. He really looked like he's grown into his body more. Um, that's something that Gary I know mentioned that he's he's you know gaining into his man strength. I think we're <laughs> we're at that era now. Barrios is really peaking. I don't know how far he goes. Because 147 is a little bit weird right now. Um, and those top three guys are really tough. Top four guys or so. Um, but I don't know where Barrios goes next. I mean, Gary, what do you think? I mean, you're you're the Barrios whisperer. Like, what do you think? Um, he never really has any answers either. He's just kind of like, whatever. Like, I'll fight him. Whatever. Um He's going to fight Cody Crawley next, I would think, right? Because he's the yeah. interim champ. That belt's going to get vacated because Crawford's going to 154. So that belt's going to become vacant. He's going to fight Cody Crawley, which is a good fight. We can debate that. You know, not that it's a high, but it, it's a good scrap in the ring. It's good action. Um, And then the winner's going to be a world champion. You're going to have all the belts vacant. So I, I think, you know, there's a chance. You know, Cody Crawley's the one that you'd want him to fight, like, if you get a belt. You know, um, I yeah, love I'm how to make an argument on this guy. <laughs> I feel like every time Gary says his full name, it becomes funnier yeah, each time. Cody Crowley. Cody Crowley. <laughs> you know, like, Cody Crowley. <laughs> I just, I no, I. He's on a tractor right now. I mean, Cody Crowley. <laughs> Cody Crowley is like Ryan Carl. Remember that guy? Yes, Cowboy. That's my boy, Ryan Carl. Like no, Cowboy. No Carl. disrespect to those guys. They're good scrappers, <laughs> right? Like they're they're oh, they they're, get down. Yes, they're good undercard, yes. a little fodder. Like, don't get me wrong there, but. Like Barrios just beat Ugas, man. Like roughly, like dominated <laughs> yeah. him. Like it, that would be such a big back step. It, I would feel bummed. I'm not even a Barrios fan. Like, yeah, it just wouldn't be something I would watch. Like, because he, you know, he's gonna win. It doesn't seem like it's something interesting. The Thurman fight makes way more sense. He already fought Thurman. How did that go for him? I, I love Barrios, but like, let's be reasonable. You know what I'm saying? Oh, like. So boots. <laughs> no, 
<laughs> Come on. Like, Boots is a killer. I'm just hoping he outgrows the division. Oh, I, I, are you saying Spence off the loss? I, don't know. I think there's a better chance he beats Spence. I would love that fight. We could do it in San Antonio. We can do it in Dallas. doesn't matter. I would love that fight, but Spence is going 54, right? So, like... <laughs> <laughs> Gary's hype for that one. You got hype for that. You can tell, man. He's um, like, Dallas, I don't care. Dude, yeah. honestly, if Barris is offered that fight at 154, he should take it. Hell Just yeah. saying. Just saying. Yes, he should. Especially it's, after, it's like, worth the money. It's, it's big money. Well, plus it's just a name, too. But where are they going to I, 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 I think on, he's, he's still he's flawed, cool. though, right? Like, he still gets hit a lot. And you don't want to get hit a lot if you're fighting Spence. So, That's, I, if you said Thurman, Boots, or or or, or Spence, you have to pick one. I, I would pick Spence. That's good money. I, I'm looking. I'm looking at welterweights right now because like everyone's moving around weight classes. Yeah, so you got a lot of people moving. It's pissing me off that they're growing. Dude, like, hold on, hold on, box oh, rec. <laughs> Cody Crowley ranked number five Ooh. at 147. 47's weird now. Yeah, you got names moving about. Verge is out. Keith is out for inactivity. Right. Low key, low key, the division sucks right now, doesn't it? Yeah, yeah, it does. Number thirteen. Wow, dude, I'm, I'm, I'll be honest, guys, and I know like the people that have listened for a long time hate when I've always picked up this era, but like I miss like the Danny Garcia, Keith Thurman, Earl Spence days. That was a fun era at 147. It really was in hindsight, but digressing. Oh my god, dude. Oh my god, love, love, love. What's Alexis Rocha doing right now? Does he have a fight lined up? Yes, remember? He he's has- got something. Yeah, he's got a fight lined up. He's fighting. Oh, and he's fighting Giovanni. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, Giovanni Santiago. Yeah. I think I think Barrios versus Rocha would be a really good fight. I yeah. know it's cross promotion. Yeah. It's hard. But, like, that's the type of but fight that would make more sense to me. You have the chance to make these fights, right? With, with all of the, the belts going to be being vacated, right? Just get the organizations to line up. It, it can go to purse bids, and Golden Boy will lose. And like you can get these fights now if if, if you if the sanctioning bodies cooperate and don't act ridiculous and put you know weird guys you've never heard of. Like what was the name of the guy that um Errol Spence fought? It was Spence mandatory for the IBF. Um, he also fought Fandora. What was his name? Oh uh, God, I know you're talking about. Weird guys like that. Like, why would that be your mandatory? Like, don't do that. Put the best guys in the weight class, right? Like, have did you boot. watch Gary? Did you watch Oscar De La Hoya's um little rant the other day about um promoters working together? Like, even though he's been like the black ball of fucking yeah, boxing. he's just they don't want to work with him. <laughs> yeah, he doesn't get it. Like, he's the problem. Everybody else seems to be working together fine. He's like, I own does own. <laughs> so crazy, Oscar. Gary, let's talk a little bit also. And I will say this: I forgot about Cody Crowley beating Abel Ramos. Ramos, yeah. Uh, I, for, I, I forgot about that win. That's a good win, even though like Crowley has no power. Like that was, it was a close fight, but that that's a good name. So I'm not Abel Ramos's career. I'm not so. <laughs> <laughs> I'm I'm not as against the fight as I was at the beginning of the conversation. I'm not against it. I just um, worries. I'm not going to watch. I, I we should at least briefly mention before we move on the the horrible decision of Jesus Ramos losing his undefeated record to Erickson Lubin when I I I think even one of the commentators said like maybe they just mixed up the names mm-hmm. like on the cards. Yes. Cuz I mean, everyone, I think, even though the fight wasn't that great because it wasn't that good, um, not a lot of action for for um, Jesus Ramos Jr., but I thought he clearly won eight rounds or so. Yes, especially coming you know? off an injury, which I didn't know also. Lubin looked like shit, too. So yes. like, And then the fact that the scorecards came in, I'll read them off. We had one scorecard that gave... Um, Every round to Erickson? Nine rounds. Nine rounds. Nine rounds, nine rounds to Erickson Lubin. And the rest gave him, uh, one gave him eight rounds, one gave him seven rounds. It's amazing, you know? isn't it? I, I, I what crazy. fight are they watching? Bad. All of them are bad, but the nine three scorecard for Lubin is so egregious to me. Yeah. Who handed it? The other name? Who handed it in? Uh, uh, Patricia, Patricia Jarman. Patricia Jarman. Patricia. Jar- She's been around for a hundred years too. Patricia Jarman. You've been officially put on blast. 
You can't do this <laughs> job anymore. Horrible, man. We will man. not stand for this bullshit. And, you know, it sucks as you have, like, losers like Steve Kim going out there and tweeting and deleting, saying, like, it's why certain fighters, meaning non-black fighters, shouldn't be a PBC. And that's just ridiculous because so we see this on every promotion. We yeah. see bad scorecards on every card. Even the local cards we go to, we see bad scorecards Crazy. all the time. And those are the same judges that we see on the big shows. So like, Same why did Steve Kim. Kim just become a troll now? Like I, Steve Kim, when he he used to do pretty good work, right? Like, like and we were talking about like kind of like the, the ethnic kind of rivalries in boxing and stuff, and it's cool. Like I went to Toro Gaddy's last fight ever in, in Atlantic City when he got knocked out. It was one hundred percent Guidos, nothing else in the building, right? Like it's cool. But like then you get people who are just like race obsessed, like Steve Kim and what's Michael Montero, like. I get it, right? Like, okay, the Italian wants to root for the Italian, the Mexican wants to root for the Mexican. Like, I get it. But, like, why do you, I absolutely race obsessed? Like, a Mexican fighter can't fight on PBC. It's like, Canelo just won on PBC. I think they got I, the right on that I, one, didn't they? I think that they threw a little <laughs> wrench in there. On the same card. Yeah, on the same card. Yeah. Did the Cholo like, win that fight? Did Cholo like, get the decision? That was it's like ridiculous. Was, like, I don't under, like why do people have to be like absolutely race obsessed? They are, it's, and they race bait everything, and they they base all of their stuff on that. But I don't think they live in the real world. I don't think like I see them at shows and they're so awkward and so fucking scared of life. Like, honestly, I'm nice to everybody. I see all the refs that are on TV, all the judges, they all know who I am. Like the commission knows who I am. Like they're all nice, but he's weird. Steve Kim or Michael yeah, Montero? Steve, Steve Kim. Kim? Uh, I never met Montero, but like Steve Kim, Dougie. Dougie Fisher. Like they know who I am. I sit right the fuck in front of them. And they, 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 they're like, like they're, they, they have no, I, they just don't live in reality. I don't think they I, live in their mom's basement. Like got to know Steve from a couple of events. Like he's a, he's a nice guy. Like he's cool to talk to. But you, like you could tell, like, I, I don't understand like the race obsession. Like, I don't, I don't really. Like, it was just like their well, niche. How is this the root of everything? Uh, you, got, you got, you got to remember their like audience. You have, yeah, to, you have to remember Gary, down. like there's a huge sizable audience online that. Like, so he's a troll. He's just being a troll. He's is trolls, racist, whatever you want to call him, right? And it's a big market. Like you can tap into that. You know, you can tap into the people that listen to Candace Owens. Yeah. And like the Dave Rubens it, of the it, world. It's not. It, it's Nick Fuentes. It's that type it, of stuff. Like too. how much of a crossover is there between Nick Fuentes fans and boxing heads? Like how it's much online. of a it's, it's purely people online. You have to remember that it's not boxing heads. Nope. They just want people to follow them because they know they're going to say some wild shit. And they have and tons all. of clickbait. Yes, they always shit have. That they don't know what they're talking about. Like they clearly don't and, live. And in... then you get like Dougie. I know they like love that they live in LA and they're so ethnic because they live in LA. But like, really, stop. And then you have people like Dougie who wants to be so self righteous when he's literally owned by a promoter like his entire <laughs> outlet is owned I've, by never had a problem with, I've met him a bunch of times i sat next to him at the ryan garcia and emmanuel to go fight he sat right next to me i had no problem with them gary you don't cause problems anywhere you everybody go everybody says that like, <laughs> gary, i swear people tell no, me all I, the time like oh my god i sat next to that guy he was so nice i'm like yeah i know gary He's you so only sweet. like rock the boat when you want to interview eddie hearn which i respect Keep dude, doing you're that. like Eddie Hearn size too. Like, dude, I was intimidating. Yeah, because I was so scared when I met Eddie Hearn. I was He's scared. I'm tall, five dude. feet. I'm five Eddie. feet. Did you but see the, uh, the the Bam and um uh, uh yes. Sonny Edwards press conference? Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I'm foot and a half. Yeah, they're like so someone cute. else. <laughs> so they stood on top Did of the. You see the sweatshirt that, that Bam was wearing in that press conference? Oh my lord. The They're back. adorable. Did you see him playing ping pong? Stop, guys. <laughs> guys. I hated Sonny so much, and now like all oh, him and Bam are all BFFs. I'm like, oh, it's no, cute. No, it's a bromance. I hope double knockout. Double knockout. Don't say that about Bam. Jesus. What's your problem with Bam? Just because I like him? Is that like yes, a... Gary? No, because yes. he's Josh Franco's brother. <laughs> and you also like Josh Franco, Gary. So like, I have to hate on the brothers. Come on. It's like Tanahara. Like, I don't really hate Tanahara. He seems like a nice guy. Love but what's he done since he's lost? Deer Nothing. Headlights. He's, anyway. got, he's, got, he's got a couple of wins. 
That, that is technically true. Yes. But I, um, I want to quickly round off the rest of the car so we can move on to other topics because we do have some other topics yes. to get to. Uh, Elijah Garcia, undefeated prospect. He looked good in his win. Fun fight Fun against fight. Jose Resendez. Um, wasn't he also the one that we know that was trained by um, Resendez? Alvarado uh, and Maywood? Alvarado's dad. Adrian Alvarado's dad. No. Didn't we see someone on this we card? We did see. He's with somebody else. No, somebody else we know. Okay, I forget then who it was. Uh, Vajdik picked up a win against Isaac Rodriguez. Frank Sanchez picked up a win against Scott Alexander. Terrell Gachet picked up a win against Keandre Leatherwood. Um, and there's some other fights on the card as well. I want to get into, um, since this is a PBC card, we've been talking about zone as well. Um, the whole rumors, and I don't know how true it is, because I haven't looked at boxing news like you guys have, of PBC is leaving Showtime. Uh, and going to Amazon. That's what I'm hearing. Allegedly. A Allegedly. told me. May or may not be true. I yeah. want to also tap in here that I've seen rumors also that The Zone is leaving the U.S. market as well. Um, after this year, I don't know which one is true or if both of them are true. Or not. Or none of them are true. I don't know. I, this is what I'm hearing. Folks. Gossip section. The gossip this section. This is all allegedly, folks. Allegedly. allegedly. I want to give my brief thoughts on it, then I'll open the floor to either one of you. Um, I think the end of Showtime Boxing, if that is happening, is deeply sad. Ooh, so sad. Um, I think there's obviously been some material issues with the system of boxing. Once we went to premium cable, I understand that with HBO and Showtime. But, like, in terms of my era as, like, watching boxing, growing up in boxing, I grew up in the HBO Showtime era. I didn't I didn't know anything before that. So, like, the, the end of that era is deeply sad to me. Mm -hmm. um, not only for, like, all the memories, but plus, like, I love the Showtime broadcast team. Like, I had some issues with the HBO broadcast team as it got along. But it was still good production quality. It's still HBO. You know what I mean? Showtime brought a level of production quality, um, level of gravitas to a show that honestly I still don't feel in any other yeah. network. Whether it was PBC with other networks too, whether it was PBC on Fox or whatever, it didn't feel the same. Um, whether it's Zone, ESPN, none of them feel the same as that Showtime telecast. Um, Al Bernstein, I think, is probably the best commentator. In the history of boxing, I will no! probably. Yes, Gary. Oh no, yes. no. Yes, I, I, I love Al Bernstein to death. I think Marwan Nalo is a Hall of Famer. He's done the highest level of every combat sport. You know, he doesn't speak he Italian. Marwan Nalo doesn't speak Italian. Gary, I, there's probably a lot of fucking Italian Americans that don't speak Italian. His dude. name is Mauro Ranello. And he always goes, Mamma Mia. He, he was going down the elevator. It was a Charlo fight when Charlo was fighting Dennis Hogan, right? I was going up the elevator. I saw him, right? I said something just basic to him in Italian, right? And he looked at me like, What? I'm like, <laughs> Really? I, Maybe he just Gary. didn't hear you, Melody. Gary. No, no, no. I said it to him clear as day. Like, he looked at me like, I don't, I don't know what you're saying. Melody, do people assume that you speak Spanish? The people Everybody. speak all the time. Everybody. Okay, yeah, easy That's breezy. All. I don't ever g get walking in someone but, like, no. hey, are you from California? Look, like, no, look, no. Look, let's stop comparing Italian American migration and immigration <laughs> to Mexican American <laughs> immigration. Very different. I'm just brown. They're they, I, they walk in there like she's a brown girl. She has to know Spanish. The last like, the last time there was a sizable Italian immigration wave was like in the fucking like 20s or something like that, guys. Like it's not the same, Gary. It's okay. It's okay. I don't expect Irish Americans to speak Gaelic. They don't speak Gaelic in Ireland in a thousand years. Most of the time that's they because Gaelic in of Ireland. England and the damn <laughs> colonizers, okay? Damn fucking let's, let's, Brits. Oh, you know what you got? You know what you forgot to mention on the undercard of Canelo? What? Was after the Canelo fight, we had the pro debut. Oh, of Mayweather, yeah. Mayweather's yeah, um, little protege. What is his name? Kermel Moton? Motion? I can't even read that far. Moton, right? Kermel Moton or Moton. something. And uh, he beat the shit out of his opponent. Um, but the 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 post um, press conference was where everybody was um, had me rolling. He was talking about 
pretending he didn't know Inouye's name, saying that. Well, you're, this... talking about, you're talking about Mayweather, not Mo. And, yes, Mayweather, Mayweather hijacked the press conference. Yes. He didn't say that part. Sorry, he <laughs> hijacked the. Or I'm saying the people that watched it know what the fuck I'm talking about, dude. Floyd took that mic and did not care. <laughs> for that and and Joe DeGuardia speaks Italian, by the way. Oh my fucking he God, also, Gary. He also sexually harasses the women in his office, apparently. Allegedly. Joe DeGuardia. Oh, <laughs> He's got oh, yes, more Italian. lawsuits than you can. Let's not use him as the <laughs> spokesperson for the Italian <laughs> community, it's Gary. Always, like, the guy with the weird sexual proclivity is always the Italian. The only one we found out wasn't Italian was Anthony Weiner. We found one that was. <laughs> it's always the Italian, right? Like it's it's Cuomo, it's Jody, it's always the Italian. Have you have sexual. you watched? We told uh, him about it. No, no. Have you watched the Anthony Weiner documentary yet? <laughs> oh no, I meant to watch that. I keep forgetting. Come on, Garrett, Gary. you gotta watch it's that, hilarious. man. I, I will, I will, I will. I, I forget what's on, but I'll I'll find it and send it to you. Hilarious. Digressing, guys, because okay, back, back to back, back. PBC, back to PBC leaving, leaving Showtime. Showtime. God, I was on this like but sad Showtime. moment here, and you just. I didn't do oh, he's a fucking. Well, it was Gary that was like, he don't speak Italian. And look, anyways, but yeah. wrapping my thoughts real fast. Okay, commentators sad, Bye. sad. Yes, good day. Um, Amaz- good day. Amazon is a giant monopoly that should be like nationalized or something like it's or broken up. Like antitrust laws sh- should at some point come into Amazon. I don't know how it's still around. I get people love it because like it's a one stop shop for all. I get that, but it's a fucking horrible institution and i think it has not done a good service when it comes to the movies and tv side of its entertainment and to expect it to do really well when it comes to sports i think it's also probably a misunderstanding i've seen a lot of people on twitter be happy about this news and i don't well, understand I don't why think, well if you watched um prime amazon um in a ways fight they haven't had any issues you know, well, in Japan. Well, yeah, I understand that. And that's a giant market. That's a lot of money pouring into Amazon. Like, so if that went smooth, I'm sure they're thinking it's. I know they're not the same market, but I know they're probably thinking, okay, once we move into the U.S., it's not going to be that difficult, considering we've already had such major success with, in a way, the real face boxing. He's not fighting on Amazon Prime. Nobody seemed to have a problem there. I don't know. I just, I don't, I don't see it being a good long-term idea. I mean, we're putting the hands of boxing in, really, I mean, honestly, if, especially if the zone goes out of the U.S. market. Yeah, then it's. Honestly, be boxing will be in the hands of Amazon and the Disney Corporation. Yeah. If anyone out there says they trust those two corporations, hey, man, I'm not, whatever, <laughs> whatever you say, bro. You go ahead and you, you you say they're doing a great job. I just look at what they've done on their streaming platforms, and I think they've dropped the ball time and time again with price increases. So I I am very skeptical of this being a long term solution for boxing or a long term home, for, I should say, for boxing. For PVC. It's the home of Thursday night football. Amazon is home of Thursday night football. Why couldn't it be the home of PBC boxing? It could. I, I'm, I got the Bears game on right now, Amazon Prime. The only thing is, right, they're probably going to increase the price, which sucks for who's ever paying for the account you're watching, right? Like, whoever pays for that account that you're watching, <laughs> whosoever account you're logged in on, but, that's going to suck for that person. We've also seen, like, what Netflix has done with passwords and, and trying cutting to... Cutting accounts. C- cutting accounts off, right? We don't think Amazon... Plus, I don't know. I still don't pay for my Netflix account. <laughs> that's, my, that's, my, that's my mother-in-law. There, there is a limit on the amount of devices you can have. And I think on even Disney Plus, there is a limit yeah. on the amount of devices you can have yeah. logged in as well. Like we pay for so, I mean, at some point, they're going to start restricting this to increase profits because we know, we know what we have seen when it comes to the numbers from these streaming services. They are not a moneymaker. They're a huge loss for some of these companies. Okay. Like Disney is not making money on Disney Plus right now, guys. Like that's no, none not... of them are. None of these streaming services right now, as of twenty, you know, October of twenty twenty three, none of them are really making money. Netflix, which has been around the longest, kind of market standard for a long time, they've been in debt forever. Like I, I don't see how anyone thinks like th- like we're gonna get this as the next paradigm of boxing on Amazon. And the and Fox Star- News one too. That's not even owned by Fox anymore. They got other investors to buy into because it, it was losing money. Like exactly. these, these streaming shows, as of right now, maybe eventually they'll be profitable. Right now, none of them are. So I worry about it. 
you know, in an age of like, we're like, oh, we're cutting off cable. We're going to save money and just got, buy a couple like streaming services. All of a sudden we're paying a hundred dollars for mm -hmm. 12 different streaming services. And when we could be paying 65 bucks for cable or something like that, you know what I mean? Like, and we're still paying on top of that pay-per-views. We're still buying renting yes. movies. We're still renting series. Like people like you think if it goes to Amazon Prime, they're still gonna have pay-per-views because yes. that was the one. Yes, yes, that, that, that's lose, lose, right? Money. Yeah, have to. I I don't see how that shifts. We, we didn't with the zone. Like we make jokes about with the zone, right? Like the zone, the death, the pay-per-view, right? Yeah. And then the zone's on DAZN how many pay-per-views? <laughs> but like, Amazon is many many times the size of. Anything Blavnik owns combined, right? I mean, like Amazon Prime, Amazon is is, is massive. I mean, to Amazon them, itself, yes, is probably bigger than like Warner Music Group, for example, which is probably the biggest entity Len Blavnik has. But I don't know about Prime Video streaming. Like, I don't know what that subsidiary does for Amazon, how profitable it is, how what its actual market reach is. Because we really don't know that for a large part is like how many homes are these apps in? Yeah, right. How many people are watching? All that's hidden. Yeah. Like especially Gary, like we talk about how little it is that we're getting like pay per view numbers nowadays, and how little we get TV numbers, and the lack of information we have as like media members, journalists, whatever you want to call us, right? Like if all of this stuff goes to streaming, we get no access to data. And on top of it, the fighters don't too. When you talk about like the Screen Actors Guild, the right. Writers Guild, their fight, like one of the big things they actually, especially the writers, because they won their thing at least, or at least they're potentially going to win it. One of the things they had to let go of was the releasing of these numbers. So streaming services still have all of their data be private right now. So if you're a fighter and you want to come in and you want to be able to negotiate your market share and, and your contract, how are you going to do that when you don't know what numbers you're doing? You know, they're going to give you the numbers. On top we're of seeing more and more commissions not releasing yeah. gate information as well. Like, they have to by law, it's a public information because it's coming from the commission. I don't understand how they get away with this. I, I yeah. don't under, I truly don't understand. G Gary, the, the entity doing it is privately owned, it's regulated by the government. So the only thing they would probably have to disclose is what they are physically making. And that would be fiscal, like, like, um, like a fiscal, like balance sheet at the end of the year. Right. That they report back to the governor. Right. And the state I, government. I, I, I don't know. I guess cool. maybe that makes sense. I don't know. I mean, I, I don't know what these laws are, but I, I try to get things from the tax state commission and they don't even respond to you. It's like, this is against all the, um, uh, Freedom of the fem, uh, the, the FEMA, uh, the Freedom of Information Act laws. Like, like it's, it's, it's not, it's, it's, it's not. What well, you would have to one put in a file for that that costs money. You know that, right? Yeah. FOIA, FOIA, like requests like cost money, which sucks. Um, but again, these are private entities that they're regulating, right? So like they're not public records. So like if you're a private corporation, you don't have to release any of your numbers to the public. There's no legal. For, there's no there's nothing for that i think except for maybe for a request so if you're a fighter you're coming into the situation now in the next few years where you may not be able to negotiate properly what you deserve so a lot of these fighters moving up i'd be worried because mayweather pacquiao canelo they got to see what they were doing on tv what pay-per-view numbers that they were doing all this stuff i don't think they're going to be able to see that stuff moving forward and if you're a promoter, maybe you don't as well. Like yeah. you're gonna have to get that in the contract if you're PBC, because Amazon could say you don't have a right to what numbers Our you're numbers, getting. Yep. That's that's very possible. So I I'm very concerned about this move. But anyways, I've hogged up the mic. Melody, do you have any thoughts about the idea of PBC leaving Showtime, going to Amazon? The idea of the Zone maybe leaving boxing at the end of the year as well in the U.S. market. I'm not sure about DAZN. I didn't really hear the rumor on that one, but the rumor of Showtime leaving is sad. It's going to horribly leave a hole in my heart, just like HBO did. And then, you know, moving to Amazon, the only thing I see is that they had such success with In a Way's fights that, but it's a different market. It's a different, it's a new you way. Know, it's, it's a new way. It's Japan. But I mean, 
I want boxing to succeed anywhere. So I can only hope that it works or we get PBC on Fox again, I guess. <laughs> I don't know. You know, I don't know. Gary. Oh, P- PBC on Fox would be great because it's free, free, right? Um, and you can have cards on FS1 and stuff, but like, I, I, I'd wrap. Just my personal preference. I'd rather it be on, you know, cable because that's just better for me because I'm old, right? But like, it's 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 all going the way of streaming. So I mean, this is gonna happen eventually anyway. And you know, instead of having, you know, CBS, ABC, Disney, you're just gonna have a couple of streaming services that own everything, right? And Netflix, I mean, uh, Amazon is, is obviously making a move here on sports. And they're gonna do what the zone wanted to do, I think. I, I don't think it's a bad fit. I, I I don't again, is it long term? Well, that 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 depends on how many subscribers they think it brings in. Like it could be, or they could drop it in a year or two, right? I, I don't know. It, it, that that all depends on how many people subscribe to Amazon Prime because of this. I hate I hate these shifts in boxing. Yeah, it's rough. I, I think it's gonna be uh you know, in a way, Gary, you know, when we talked about years ago, like the bubble and boxing and it like bursting at some point, like I feel like we're in that burst period. <laughs> it might to be, be here. To be quite honest. I feel like the last year or two when boxing still hasn't fully recovered from COVID or whatever it is we want to say, um, <clears throat> it, it's just I, we're in this new world. And I think we're going to see – Fewer promoters get that type of shine. I think we're going to see only a couple networks show it. And then we're going to see fighters slowly and slowly, I think, get lower purses too because of this. If this is a long-term thing, I think we're going to see certain fighters on the come up like a Boots, who's not a pay-per-view fighter yet, but will be, you know, like those type of guys, they're going to struggle, I think, trying to get in their contracts proper information to be aware of what they're making their total value as a fighter and as an event, you know, it's going to be hard. Why doesn't PBC just get an app, right? Like Al Heyman's got the money for it. Like you get the PBC app for 10 bucks a month and it's just PBC boxing. Seriously. Oh, don't they don't have the money anymore. I mean, realistically, I mean, they have this. Al Heyman's got to sit in his glove compartment. You know how much money that guy has? He's got to sit in his back pocket. Pony it up. But, but I'm being serious. But then there's no profits to split. It's all yours, right? And you're getting all, all boxing. You, you you know how many subscribers you have for boxing because it's all boxing, right? Like in, in the zone, if you have a subscription in America, if you have a subscription to the zone, why do you have it? it? It ain't for the billiards. It ain't for the darts, right? Like it's for one thing. So like the model is there. Why doesn't Al Heyman just have a boxing app for 10 bucks a month? It's I- expensive. We try... Um- didn't we we were on this road to doing this to having an app with the promotion company that we worked for but it's like still six million and that was to have all the investors to to get the person to work on start working and then all the the stuff we had to put forward remember it it was it was a lot and it it never even got finished it never was completed so i think it's probably harder than than people think I but, think I mean Al Heyman money can do anything, you know. I think it's just one of those things where why would you put up the bill when you can go to a network and they they, they want to put the they put up, the yeah. bill up for you. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like they pay for it. Yep. That's the thought process. Because then you got to answer to you got to deal with this, you got to deal with negotiating contracts, you got to deal with, with with them saying we're not interested, we're not going to renew you, whereas if you have the app, it's 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 yours. Yeah, but if you're a big enough promoter, if let's say you lose a TV deal, right? Like you're gonna get another one. It's, we're not talking about Kathy Duva, who all of a sudden just is no longer disappears. Being, it disappears. You know what I mean? Like PBC is a much bigger entity than that. Whether mm-hmm. it's Matchroom or Golden Boy or Top Rank, like those four are gonna hang around and be picked up regardless. I um, I think so. I mean, the only one that maybe is gonna be in that mix now. We're talking about like, are they gonna get picked up post the zone if that happens? Is like a Golden Boy. Cause, if like, they got Ryan Garcia, yes. If they don't, no. I mean, it's they, it's really that simple. Ryan know, I, Garcia I think, carries the company. My last two thoughts on this, and then we can move on if we want. Um, if I'm a fighter, 
this is one of those like reasons why I think about like unionization within combat sports because you you have no collective say in these decisions. Now all of your fights are potentially go to a different app. The deal is going to be structured differently, and you have no yeah. say in it. You know, and I get Heyman PBC is doing a unique thing where they're putting a lot of their main eventers as their own promotional company, so they get some of the profit sharing. I, I think that's that's a fine little band aid, but like this is one of those issues where like if you had a fighter union, they can negotiate and say either we want this deal or we don't want this deal, and the promoter can't outright unilaterally make this decision. Um, you know, my other thought is that you know I think short term this would be a cash influx probably for PBC. Because Amazon, I think, is if they do this, will throw a lot of money at it. Because it's Amazon, they have a lot of money to throw at anything. Um, but I do wonder about that drop off, like you say, Gary. Because PBC has great fighters, but all the great fights are mostly co promotions. Yeah. You know, and we're talking about exclusive deals, maybe, and that always restricts the potentialities of co promotion fights. So yeah. a worry, you know. Um, any more thoughts on this before we move on? No, we can move on. Okay, brief uh, mention uh, of the fights this weekend uh, on DAZN, Manchester, England, Lee Wood versus Josh Warrington for Wood's WBA title. Terry Harper, Celia Brackis, uh, obviously rescheduled from a, about a month or two ago, I think exactly. Um, also on DAZN in Vegas that same day, Gilberto Ramirez versus Joe Smith Jr., it's a fight. It, it'd be a, it's it's a fight, you know. It's a fun uh, fight. It's it's gonna be and a knockout. It ain't going the distance. Uh, also, in uh, just on televised fights for us in the U.S. But same day, one in Canada, one in Tokyo, both title fights. Uh, Evelyn Bermudez versus Kim Clavel for Bermudez IBF and WBO Junior Flyweight title, and then uh, Patanchme CP Freshmart versus Yodai. Shigoka, sorry if I mispronounced that, uh, for the WBC strawweight title as well. In Tokyo. In Japan. Mm -hmm. um, we're not going to see those fights, but hey, they're there. So if they're international and you have access, I guess, watch those fights. Um, I'm excited for the Wood Warrington fight. That should be fun. Harper I think both different. main events. I, I think both main events are good fights. I feel like Brackus is about to be retired and it's going to yeah. be sad. She's past it. I love ladies. Any um, thoughts on these fights before we head out of here? Warrington and Wood. Rob thinks Wood stops him. I can't see that at all. What do you think? I, I, think, I think it's Warrington possible. Yeah. Well. I think it's possible. I'm going for Wood. I, Wood's going to win. Yeah. I a, a late stoppage is possible. Warrington's been in a lot of like dog fights. Mm -hmm. I think we forget about that, too. Up. Yeah. Wood's old. And you know who beat Wood? Jazza Dickens. One time, Gary was. He like, beat. He lost to Jazza Dickens, bro. He was getting. And he came back and he knocked out Shanzu in the twelfth round. Kudos to him. He was losing that fight when he got a twelfth round knockout. Eleven, twelfth, right? It was both twelve. And then he was losing to to Mick Conlon, bro. Like I get, he's getting these dramatic knockouts. So full credit. But like. Do you really think he's got like another one? Like he's going to be losing every round to Josh Warrington and then get a 12th round knockout again to save the day? Yeah. Uh, it, yeah. It's possible. I wouldn't keep betting on this. 10th round. <laughs> yeah, that's 12th. <well. laughs> Come on. Let's not be crazy here. Um, well, I think that might be it. Any other news that we should get to? Any other topics? Oh, Fury and Usyk signed a two fight deal. Oh, yes. yes. Um, I, I'll believe it when it happens. I, I, I get it signed, but there's no date. The IBF said that they're going to um, call their minutes right after the first fight. So the second fight, unless something is worked out, would not be for Undisputed. Yeah, I'm I'm a little bit skeptical of it still. Yeah. I I know it's said sign, but I it's it's, it's Fury, man. It's it's hard to think anything that he's doing is legit. Yeah, he talks so much shit. And it's like, well, imagine like Francis Nagano knocks him out. In yeah, like a month. Then how's he gonna fight? You know what I mean? Like I know that's not gonna happen, but like, like I mean, it did. Hilarious. When he goes on a bender after the fight and he disappears. 
You know, we keep saying he's going to go on a bender, bender and he's, dude, and he's not. I know. I've been waiting for his benders. They're the craziest. <sighs> I get the best memes, the best videos. Tyson, go on a bender. Or go get caught, like, flirting with another girl so your wife gets oh, mad at you. Yeah. Like, I, those or are... wear those shorts where your, like, double butt hangs out, you know? <laughs> do a lot of coke and, like, talk about Jesus. Like, just being crazy. <laughs> he's... When I was at the Canelo uh, Billy Joe Saunders by Cowboy Stadium at the way right? I'm in the media section. They're telling me Tyson Fury is here. Right? I'm looking at the stage. I'm like, he's a six foot nine dude. Like, how am I not seeing him? Like, where is he? Like, no, he's in the crowd. He's in the crowd, drunk as a skunk, no shirt on. It's like, you're Tyson Fury. Like, get your life together, bro. Get 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 yourself together. This is as this is his together, Gary. This I feel is like this. That's- <laughs> That's what no this shirt is. On, drunk. Get your life they, together, Melody. What are, you doing? <laughs> what are you doing with no shirt on? <laughs> a couple uh, housekeeping things before we head out of here. Uh, I had two articles published this week. People's World. People's World. Yes, on the LA Tenants Union rally in March. That was attacked by the LAPD. Yeah, that was crazy. Uh, check out my video on my social media at my Hunter MCR uh, to see that. Um, because yeah, having LAPD attack you and other people in your community, not a fun, not a fun day. My ankle's kind of so messed up from it. Fuck you, police. Um, but check out that article, peoplesworld.org, LA Tennis Union, uh, stop gentrifying Los Angeles. And then another article, uh, on Mount Tai Press and, uh, Marcus Lennis Reading Hub on the United Front and what that is. Very good articles, check them out if I do say so myself. Um, I do have an article like half done on Canelo Alvarez. So I'm going to also dive more into like, is he really leaking the boxing? You know, maybe compare some numbers and stuff like that, like trajectory, you know, see what it is. Um, but yeah, that's about it. And that will be published on the, the beauty of boxing. boxing.com. And I'm hoping since we have been on some more fights and I do have a couple of things to post um, from different PR. Um, people that have sent me over, you know, stuff about Garcia boxing, local boxing here in the, um, why are you bringing that dog in the frame? Um, <laughs> Gary, we have a guest. It, it's my sister's dog. <laughs> so, his her, is it's a boy, a boy. or a girl? Boy, his all, name is Bronson. All dogs are boys. All cats are girls. I know that's not possible, but it's true. <laughs> Girl, cat, boy, dog. Yeah. yeah. But any who of the matter, yes. So we're going to get some more stuff up on the website. And um, also, this was the last week, guys, for OnlyFans for the Beauty of Boxing. We have closed that chapter and it is over. So if you missed it, you missed it. And um, yeah, no more of that going on. But we do have the website that we are going to continue um, pushing. And yeah, go ahead and visit Instagram. X, Facebook, videoboxing.com. Gary. Uh, find me all forms of social media, 3D Boxing, 3D Boxing Blog. Uh, subscribe to both my YouTube channel, Texas Boxing Scene, completely dedicated to Texas Boxing, and my upgraded, up, updated channel, uh, 3D Boxing Blog on YouTube. Uh, I will show you how to bring down the house. We'll make money together. All three of these fights, I, I did three fights this week. Um, I'm going to show you how to make money in every one of them. That's 3D Boxing. Uh, that's 3D Boxing Blog on YouTube. Follow and subscribe to that channel, and I'll show you how to bring down the, the bring down the house. Uh, it is October 5th, 2023. Texas is still not a country. Let's make Texas a country again. From Texas to the world, thank you, and God bless. I want to remind everyone that, I don't know if I said this or not, me and Gary next month debate on should Texas be its own country. Oh, it's going to be fun. It's going to be a fun one. I, I can't wait. I'm going to do some reading. Great. Uh, anyways, yes. Like button, show the show, all that fun stuff. Texas boxing, 3D boxing blog, the beauty of boxing, people's world, all that fun stuff. You know where to find all of our work. Have a good night. Good evening. And remember, fuck the police and free Palestine. Have a good one. How dog. Thank you.